Good morning, it's Tuesday, February 15th, about 6 a.m. Central Time. Overnight, the precious metals are higher after yesterday's small sell-off, followed by a bit of buying here, a bit of bargain hunting. So looking at gold prices here today, April gold up $4 at $2,008. March silver up $0.28, cents, $2,267. March copper up 2 at $3,72. April platinum up 8 at $9,05. And March palladium up 29 at $9,65. So palladium prices moving about $100 in two days. So that's a $10,000 move per contract. So if you're going to play that market, have some tight stops, position size properly, and you probably got to have a pretty decent size account to play around with it. Now, looking at the markets here today, a couple things. Gold fell to the lowest level since November. It briefly breached 2000. It rejected a continued sell-off as they think bargain hunters came in. I called a few clients up, let them know that gold had breached that $2,000 level. They were welcoming prices down there and a bit surprised that we had sold off there. So looking at the resistance point, 2015 is going to be your first resistance point of today. That first level of support just below that 2000 level at 1998. Looking at the gold silver ratio, peaked in 2024 at 92, currently trading at 88 and a half. So that's one of the lower levels we've seen here just recently. So gold might be, or silver might be getting a little bit stretched on the gold market, although I think that both of them are at bargain basement prices at the moment. Your resistance level on the silver market, 2286. Your support level, 2213. So a bit of a wide range here. We've seen a pickup in volatility in the silver market, up about 1% in the overnight session. The big question is, has the dollar peaked? And the dollar index is coming off just a touch here, 104.51. While treasury yields, I believe that long-term yields here, we have peaked and short-term yields, we have peaked. So as these yields start to come down, we'll see a pickup in the gold market, a little bit of momentum below it, below it. So the precious metals, though, however, one could argue that we're not in an economic state yet or a level that allows for a continuous rally in the market. I still believe you need China, you need stimulus over there, you need their economy, and they've really been out of the uh, out of the picture at the moment. It seems like people have acknowledged their deterioration in the economy and they've moved on to other things. There's better markets to discuss on financial news, especially the tech sector recovering, Bitcoin breaching 20 uh, 52,630. So looking at uh, other headlines here, UK slips into a technical recession. That's kind of shocking here. So UK is usually the one that raises interest rate first. They cut rates first and their economy tends to mirror the US economy, but at a faster scale because of their dense population. So they have had two quarters of declines on their GDP. Slipping into a technical recession, is that something that the US will have? We're going to have to wait and see. Perhaps that's why we've got this interest rate cut chatter towards the end of the year. However, much of the data has been quite supportive. Looking at uh, what comes out today, it is a laundry list of things. I'm going to be strapped to the desk the entire day. You got Empire State Manufacturing at 730. Retail sales, that's the one that I'm watching. And we anticipate that core retail sales are unchanged in January. Our forecast reflects a kind of a pause in the spending following the strength that was early in the holiday season. And then it was kind of a drag as things went on, as you had some severe winter weather come through. A lot of weather down here had really prevented people from going out uh, on the retail sides front. We'll also have Philly Fed Manufacturing. That'll impact some of your precious metals. The import prices, initial jobless claims, that's the one that gold's going to be watching the most. 220000 is what the estimate is. That's also the consensus. Slightly bit of an uptick here from the previous week. Continuing claims, 1.88 thousand. That's in line with consensus, slightly higher than the previous week. We'll also have industrial production, manufacturing production, capacity utilization. These things are going to affect the copper market. So you got to be strapped in if you got all this stuff. And then as the day progresses on, we're going to have Fed Governor Waller will speak. And on January 16th, they said that the data we have received over the last few months allowing the committee to consider cutting policy rates in 2024, but we want to be careful about it. So a bit of a dovish tilt there. Might get a little tailwind here in the markets if that if Christopher Waller comes out and pivots there. Then later on tonight at about 6 p.m. Central Time, you're going to have Atlanta Fed P President Bostic will speak in bit more of a hawk here, a little bit saying it's premature to cut rates. It's tend to be the rhetoric. So now yesterday I did do on the Schwab Network 
a television segment covering how I believe Bitcoin can go to a hundred thousand or a million dollars in 10 years. And then also how natural gas prices could potentially go negative come about April or May. Sounds crazy, but the environmentalists will not allow the current administration to continue the flaring exponentially to burn off any excess supplies. So those supplies are going to build up. We're like 7% over the one year average, about 10% over the five year average on those supply inventories. So as we continue to build inventories, prices should trend lower. Now, if you got any questions, give me a call. I'd love to talk to you. Just give me a shout. Shoot me a text message. 312-858-7303. Remember, futures option trading does involve risk of loss. May not be suitable to all investors. Good luck. Good trading.